Welcome again to the Ben's Day Show as we come back again with another exciting episode. Today we are looking at the journey of Trumpis then and now. The superstar Guaito group that has been there for years and years and years. It kept us dancing um, for many years. And we've got Mr. Eugene Mtetwa, who is the member of the band. And Mr. Mtetwa, thank you for coming. <laughs> thank you for inviting me. And uh, may I greet your viewers also at home and everywhere in the world. It, it's good to see that we are moving gradually. We are moving, in fact, speedily. We are moving to, towards um, the digital world. Sure. That's very good. Yeah, sure. And. I remember recently we were somewhere. Which place it was? Recently? Yeah, recently. Well, we're not in uh, Olundi. Uh, no, o no. Ongo. Uh, no, no, no. Guanongo. No, we of course, Guanongo, we were there. Yes. At Kosin Guazulu, but there is a place we were together. I wonder if you still remember. After the court the case court. in oh, Gamtuan. Gamtuan. Togozo. Yes. Gamtuan and Togozo. Hey, that mm. house is beautiful. Yo, yo, yeah. Oh my God, yes, I yes, can't yes. believe that some people are living in such houses. Hey, and young people for that matter. It's good to see that happening. It is so stunning. Yeah. I, I mean, that house is, is mm. a top billing house, I yeah. must say, you know. Yeah. And uh, when I went there, I felt like you can invite such people to come pay a visit because your house looks <laughs> like a shack. <laughs> <laughs> My house will look like a shack to those people. Then how do you invite them, you know? Uh, but those guys are very humble. I'm, I'm actually impressed with... Uh, I've spent some time with the entire family. Yeah. If you remember, there, there were about 17. I had hosted all of them. Wow. Uh, before going to court. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they're so, so humble, hey. You wouldn't tell that, the, that uh, they come from the royal family. Oh my God, oh. it's amazing. We had fun and the mood was jovial yeah. and, uh, you know, and then you started singing a trumpet <laughs> song and you blew our minds. Everybody <laughs> was up jumping and dancing and we were scream screaming. I think I still have that clip. Uh, you still, you have? I think I have that clip. You sang that trumpet song. Which song Sweetie Lavo. Oh, Sweetie yes. Lavo. Yeah, bo. Ke man ya buritsi. Oh my God. Oh my God. I don't know what's about that song because everywhere we everywhere go to, go. Yeah. whether we're in Malawi, Zimbabwe, yeah. Zambia, yeah. anywhere in London, people go crazy over that song. It's and a, you won't believe, ne? you won't yes. believe that when we did that album, Sweet Love was the last song. You know the song that you say, oh, by the way, Kushota one song. <laughs> Let's put an... And, yeah, because we're doing a follow-up to Mahasman. And then we did Shosholos at Rompisi as a follow-up to Mahasman. It's got that sound, eh, Mahasman. And when we counted the songs, remember that that time, you had to do uh, 14 songs so that it's side A, seven songs, side and B, side seven songs. So yeah. we, we had done 15 songs and we wanted to put, add the 16th one. And we did Sweetie Level. And it became, it, over, it overtake, overtook every song, every other song. song. Yeah. And it became the most popular song. Wow, it's amazing. I think it is, I mean, it's, uh, it's mind blowing that you will release a song that will be so popular and across borders, you know. Even languages. Because Even remember, languages. that song is Sutu. It's Sutu. Yes. But go to KZN. I'm sure you, you remember when we were, oh no, that was, you were not there when we were at uh, Olundi. Yes, I was. And uh, you were there. No, 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 I you wasn't were, there. Yeah. So I started singing, and the whole house started singing. I said, how? Oh. <laughs> Let me tell you, you know that music is a universal language. Yeah. It's been said over and over again, mm. and it is true. And a song like that one, the fact that, I mean, even long after all of you guys are gone, because, I mean, in this lifetime, nobody will stay here forever. Yeah. But that song, I mean, that song will remain. Um, I was I was actually responding to some doctor 
I don't know whether you know him, Dr. Sipos Tolle, saying that Guaido is dead. And I said, please show me any other genre uh, from after 1994 that has an evergreen like drum piece, like Guaido music. Yeah. You, you play Sweetie Love, you play Mahasmani, people still dance to Mahasmani even today. Today, it's you amazing. Know? Yes, it's an evergreen song. And it's by grace, it's by God's grace that we were able to do that. We wouldn't pat ourselves, uh, our backs, and say, or blow our own trumpet and say, no, we did, we do evergreen songs. But, yeah. you know, you play my, my husband, you play Skiangangoma, you play Fosloza, you play my Labu Labu. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. Yeah. From this, You guys had, in fact, you mastered the art of music. And. Mm. And what I am seeing is that your music is lasting forever because I can think of my late sister. If she can wake up today, she could sing all the Trumpies hits. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she yeah. passed on many years ago. Then that is resilience. Yeah. How did you make it? But perhaps before we go there, yeah. what would you say about the state of our music industry today? Do you think music was striving when maybe there were, there were those uh, record companies who were run by white people? Then what is happening today? What is your view on that? Well, um, I think during that time when we started, music was striving because people could afford to buy music. Okay. You know, um, they were buying CDs, they had access to music. Now, even though the music music has gone digital, you still have our followers who are more analog than digital. Okay. Abo Koko, today when I walk in the streets, and she would say, Oh, Danam, you know how much I love you guys. Yeah. And that's the type of that that's the type of people that follow our music who want who wouldn't pay for um, buy data in order to download our music, but they buy data because they want to tell Malome that Uncle Uncool uh, uh, Shoni, yeah, sure. you know, they they would rather spend the money to buy bread than to buy music mm. from this. Uh, but besides that, I think we are failing to analyze to understand the environment that we are in and the type of people that we are serving. You know, it's people from the rural areas who still love our music. It's people from the hostels who still carry Amakumba Kumbe Mashombe. Sure. And, you know, and not those that listen with an earphone or earphone on, on, on a phone. Okay. You know, yeah. um, so I think if we were to distribute CDs, we would still sell CDs. We need to cater for those who are still behind. Remember that there's digital divide. Yeah. Our country is not a first world country that could say uh, people can download music. They don't download for free. In the United States, they can download for the whole month for $15, any kind of, of... But in South Africa, it's expensive. Data is expensive. Yeah, data is expensive. Yeah. So, so that's the challenge with the current situation that this serves more the first world countries than it serves us and we are pushed to follow the first world country. First world countries, when they move towards that, it, it's, it's deliberately done so that we're forever following and not leading. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And so um, with the members of the band, guys, I mean, how did you start? I think you have answered this question a thousand times, <laughs> but I think it is still relevant today. Now that we are in this digital space, I think it it would be relevant because we are now long we are no longer talking to our our people only in South Africa or in the yeah, continent. True. We're talking to the world, so yeah, it becomes relevant in that night. Um, yeah, we we started we started learning the game when we were still you know young and backing other people working. Uh, Abu Mandla, they were working with uh, Chico. I started working long, many years ago. I'm sure I'm over 30 something years now in the music industry. I used to work with Casino, Chakla, Sabo, Ali Kekt, Messi Pagela, oh. and then I moved to Lucky Dube. So we were learning the tools of the game. Okay. 
So when we started as Trumpis, we had already gone through exportation and everything that has to do with the industry. And so you knew the game. We already. knew the game. The when tricks we started. of the game. Yes, definitely. Wow. And then, I mean, how did you come together? Coming together, we grew up uh, from uh, the same township, which is Soweto Middlelands in particular. I went to school with Jaros. Uh, Mandla was very close to Jaros as a friend. They used to dance together. Uh, because they started as dancers, by the way. They were dancing for Chico. Oh. Uh, in the videos that I Chico <laughs> more my video I Chico, you'll see. Jaros, you remember shining makeup, I remember that. I mean, I think I remember that video. <laughs> they were you looking know? very <laughs> white. <-ish>. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. So that's when we, we then decided when, uh, I think I was doing a Best of Slaves at Downtown Studios and I invited Mandla to say, come and work with me on this. We started collaborating as early as that. I think it was 1989, if I'm, no, 1992, uh -huh. um, when I was with Lucky Dube. So I was doing Best of Slaves and I invited Mandla to come and work with me to produce that. And then we had done some songs uh, that, in, by the way, this, the, the, the Trumpy songs. Uh -huh. We had done demos, not even demos, we did a master that was rejected left and right by different record companies. And when I invited Mandla to come and work with me on um, The Best of Slaves, I had a TDK 90. Okay. I had um, recorded the Trumpy songs on side A. Now, because I didn't have money to go and buy a new cassette to record now the best of slaves for the listening session as a galo on Friday, which was going to happen on Friday. Mm -hmm. Normally it would happen every Friday. I then recorded best of slaves on side B. But I remember when I was sitting there during the NR um, meeting and side Telezi, you remember that thing you got, you got rewind the cassette in a ball pen? Oh, yeah, yeah, rewind. Yeah. He kept on going like this and talking and talking and talking yeah. because he thought that I forgot to rewind the cassette, Nibegu side A, so that they can listen to the best of slaves. Little did he know that side, side, side A was Gyangengo. Oh. You know. Oh. So, whilst they were waiting for best of slaves to play, uh -huh. And then why fuck it cassette and then Skyang and Goma played and everybody stood up and said, if this is best of slaves, spot release. Wow. After it had been rejected. After not it once. had been re I mean rejected not once. Not once. Many yeah. times. Yeah. And then on this day when he played it, everybody stood up and said, I remember that the NR includes the marketing guys, the sales, uh, the producers, in-house producers. Um, and and the, the management, the asset guard. So they said, no, this is this must be spot release. And I said, no, but this is Trumpies. This is so Trumpies. Yes, if it, is, if it is Trumpies, we're signing it now. Wow. When the time has come. When the time is right. When the time is right. Yeah. Uh, do you know what I'm learning from what you're telling us is that, uh, I mean, uh, being rejected now mm. doesn't mean you're useless. Does it mean there's no value? Yeah. Maybe it's not the right time. Yeah. And and also when you believe in it, and when the time is right, it shall blossom. Yes, they often say delay is not denial. Delay is not denial. Yeah. But then in music industry, I was speaking to another artist, a upcoming artist, mm. and I said, I just go in with the mentality that there is no artist bigger than you. <laughs> You know, yeah. it's it's you. Just believe in your talent. Yeah. And also, even if it doesn't trend, even if it doesn't fly, it doesn't mean that it is useless. It might speak to another generation to come. Yes. There are certain things that would happen in life that y you are born before time. Okay. It might happen that you are before time with whatever that you have. Uh, if I could tell you stories about certain things that I've introduced, but they were before time. Okay. And only later, you would remember, um, in um, 
Yabo Oscar the group, Yabo Oscar BOP. Yes, I remember BOP. I recorded something that was called Gong Mask. It okay. was Gong with Maskandi, so I called it Gong Mask. Okay. Way before they released the song Yaga Mashatin. I had already released something similar to, to that, wow. but it never it never got any attention. You know, wow. it was born before time. Snyaka is the king. Uh, let me disclose this and declare it openly without any fear yeah. or, or of, of being intimidated or contradicted. Um, Snyaka is the king of Guaido. Wow. Okay, let me tell you why I say that. You would hey. remember, Snyaka was the first one to, to rap during the time of the music that was called yeah. bubblegum music. Yes. And I hate to call it bubblegum music because that is, that is equivalent to, to a term that is derogatory to say bubblegum music. Bubble the reason music, why they were yeah. calling it bubblegum music is because it would only last for three months. So sure. it's like chappies, you chew it yeah. and you throw it away yeah, when sure. the sure. sweetness is gone. Yeah. So Snyaka is the first one to rap. Uh, if you remember the song that says, Jablan Nonke Fukuza, you know, he, he started rapping in the, in the township language. Township lingo. Yeah, township lingo. Mm. And um, that is why post-1994, everybody else who was in that genre, which was regarded as Babka music, they died with, with that period. It's only Sinyaka who transcended beyond the bubblegum era because yeah. he was carrying something that was born before yes. the actual Kwaito. Yes. What we then called Kwaito post-1994. Wow. That's why he remained until he left because he was born before the time of Kwaito, but he introduced that, that genre. Wow, can you? So, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you, history doesn't have blank pages. Wow, <laughs> history doesn't have blank pages. No. But I think I've just learned something today, Uguti. Snyaka is the king of Kwaito. Yeah. And that is according to you and history, just like you have yes. said it. As and a proponent of Kwaito. As a proponent, unfortunately, of we did not honor him whilst he was still alive. Wow! And say this is the person who started quite. Wow! Wow! Before wow. 1994. Wow! And so and so, you guys um, got yourselves in Guaido, and you also brought another flavor in Guaido, because you are giants in Guaido. Yeah. The fact that you you have the resilience until today, Trumpis is still there. How do you keep it going? Because with groups, it's very difficult to stay together for the longest of time. Well, ours was not um, a group that was formed out of um, yearning to be celebrated, to be stars. Yeah. We, we did what we were passionate about and believed in. Wow. Our music was created, we created our own sound. I remember even the, the, the sounds that we used in the studio. Uh -huh. We would, for instance, remember that at that time, we didn't have much technology that young people have today. We're using uh, something that they would call Atari. And because we didn't have modules that had sounds, we created our own sound. I would, we would record maybe percussion, ne? Yes. and then when we lay it on the song, would use a pitch bender so that it gives that effect. You would, you know, yeah. because those sounds were not there. Today they talk of a lockdown. We created lockdown. Lockdown. Wow. It wasn't there. It wasn't we would there. tweak the sound until it sounds like. If you remember, Messi Pakela, I was playing the bass, the bass wow, in that song. Oh, That's the lockdown. Yeah, that song. Take a look. Yeah. That's a lock drum. Mandla was creating his own sound too on the other side. And on the other side, that's what actually brought us together because we realized that our sounds, what we were searching for, was almost similar. We had the similar concept. Now, um, 
our music therefore became if you remember there was also a king 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 that uh, arthur took away if I think it was BOP, <laughs> because he took that sound. Yeah. King, 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 okay. king, 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 yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, so that's what actually created what was quite a bad. Me with that knowledge of certain things now that, I, that have become so clear to me that one, there's nothing called quite. There's nothing called, there's nothing called that. You know, this thing of giving our music generous, yeah and names it is that yen that's you know as as people we want to be different from others yeah. we are looking for identity that we don't know okay uh, you know yeah. so we keep on giving it boom we give it this yeah. we give it this but we give it my piano <laughs> academically yeah if you have to define what a gender is you should be able to define it without playing the sound but being able to write write it down and oh, say write it down. Yeah. yeah write an essay that yeah. these are the elements for instance if you talk of jazz yes you would be able to say jazz is 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 inspired was inspired by the industrialization where people in a factory would be sitting in different spaces and different corners and using that's what influenced the jazz chords because it is the different sounds that zemshini. So what they would do, they would use that as a rhythm, but sort of, I mean, as a rhythm, so that back push is cut. the heavy load that they were doing. That's where jazz comes from. It comes from Africa, not 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 United States as they would. Jazz come from Africa. Africa. Yes. Wow. Slaves wow. who are working. Yeah. You know, so those sounds, they would then put those sounds together and somebody said, Oh, it's an augmented chord. It's, that's why my Yeah, because yeah. it must be it must sound like it is a distorted chord. You know, okay. yes. Now with these genres, yes, you can't explain them. I can't tell you what Kwaito is in words. You can't. You can't and that it. disqualifies it to become a gender academically. You know. So, but yeah, because of identity, we are looking for our own identities. We want to be different from others. We come with these terms: quiet jazz, quiet what what quiet quite something. Yeah, yeah um, uh, I'm a piano. What is I'm a piano? What is Ama Piano anyway? You know Ama Piano comes yeah. from the guy who was playing with a white chukucha, white chukucha, Ihura. Yes, Ihura. yes. That guy who was with, he's the first person to start playing whilst I'm a DJ, a DJ, Azal, I'm a, oh. I'm a melody, zen, 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 zen. and then Bambizu Ma Piano. But because people don't want to give credit to those who, who discovered certain things? Yeah. They took it away. Abu Maporis as a baby. Abu Maporis as a pella. Inga na se kala. Was introduced by jokes. Okay. E kala. So he knew, and he was part of Uhu Rangit. Yes. So they taking it from there with Ama Piano. Ama Piano is a sound. It's an instrument that plays a, a particular sound. But when you listen to the Ama Piano. Do you get, get the sense the piano of the piano? Is like, no. I, I, in fact, I can't grasp what is I'm a piano. And when you play a song, just like you say, I can't say this is I'm a piano. I mean, I will hear a song that I like or a song that I don't like. Do you in a minute, it? Ingo, my I'm a piano again. Yeah. You know what, how you, define, you, you, you determine it with I'm a piano? How? Da, ba, da, da. And then that is a piano. And then he locked her. Wow. So they call it a piano. So yeah. now, if you think of a sex, a uh, saxophone, ne uh, locked where does the word a piano comes from? It's just an uh, the identity. It's just an identity. And, 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 and these identities, they make music phase out with time. With time, yes. With time, because yes. um, 
I, I, I ran e early childhood development, ne? Mm -hmm. which is a preschool or something. Mm -hmm. My preschool was big. So every end of the year, we would have a graduation, Yama Great Art. Mm. So it becomes a big function. Then I would hire a DJ. I mean, I don't know whether I am old school or I'm still a fan of the trumpets because I'm full of cool. Mm. Oh, DJ will come play me something. I will hear wing, wing. I will go crazy and say, Yella, I will tell you something as was a good pull and I would sing. Yeah, yeah. Sing <laughs> along. Know? Sing along. Yeah. Because uh, 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 groups like the trumpets, Palatina Sikules, as a Savangagas Lalela. A trumpet. I mean, that's why in Namangela studio, Mongo school, and one song a trumpet. This is a hamba nai. So man, se figa lento le na bati ye house. Mina ngas when zagalan go house. When zagalan go house, maybe when you understand. Well, a house it comes from a pop music. Mm -hmm. uh, remember that those days, baby, in za music, but wabe longo fast. Okay. Kakulu, England, London, Eli, House, Ebin Kulkon. Okay. And when it came to South Africa, my DJs are like, because Abotak, Bazana Nesi, they want something oh, that is a yeah. bit slower yes. than, With I've been thinking about you, yeah, you yeah. know? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, my DJ started changing, remember, Gok Sejin saw my LP, yes, yes. Oh. Say, 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 ten table, with sit like a slow, Oh. And that's how South African house music became. No, but still, yeah. Mina, I don't know. Oh, you don't? <laughs> the house because uh, perhaps I think I need a voice. And yeah. I need to know what a song says to me. I'm going to yeah. you understand, Elaine. Yeah. Or else, even if the song is not talking to me, but let the song speak a language that I understand. Yeah. And this is what, uh, uh, let's say, uh, genres like Kwaito, were doing to us, they were giving us that kind of music. And until today, a person like myself, I will go mad if I go to a function and they just play in Simbizota Nyinga Zuguti Gukalwapi, Guyuap, you know. Yeah, remember, maybe then you will understand this this thing. I always tell this, I'm actually supposed to be releasing a book on this, uh, documenting the Kwaito before it is documented by foreigners and often those that are coming from the western side yeah and and tell it differently and distort distort it yeah when when we started post 1994 the country is on standstill fear of black on black confrontation fear of a must hang in the only one that can be in that that it be just so it what what world? Okay. Come baby is one. It died a slow death because that time it was a time every no lame. Yes. Ama gangsters ngala. Uh huh. Ba kroli sabantu ma eti nama party ni kuma stock fell. Ba ba tateli sinta ama check rollers ngala tata bantu ana ba otwasi pass ba. Yes. Ngala ma tu 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 ama taxi driver ayalo ngala pana. They took away the only place that we knew as our playground, which was the street. Now, when we introduced Guaido, it is post-1994, and at the time when people had, would, had withdrawn from entertainment, with Maskat Sindhi Party, which was a match across us, as a person. Maskat Sindhi, I'm a gangrapi, I'm a kabasa, I'm a fig. Remember that our playground was the street. Ingeto, Abumkusha, you know, Ukeka, Itenis, for Tina Township boys and girls. That's That was our playground. I a complex, sports complex. We didn't have that. No, we didn't. Now, having withdrawn from that because of the black on black confrontation and all the everything else here in Zaga, political at the time, we, it is not by default that when we introduced quite we would just block the street, send the street bash. You remember? Yeah. Okay. There was once an era Yama street bash. Yes, because we're claiming the streets back. Wow. Post 1994, we're yeah. saying, yeah. we now have freedom so we can claim the streets. These are our streets. It's Twilight in the school. That is why we just block here. I'm a taxi drive. I'm a taxi drive. Yes. Because we're taking that. Yes. The airwaves. We're dominating the airwaves and saying, this is 
uh, our space. That's why YFM became the bigger station uh, during that era because it was pro Guaido. Wow. Okay. Wow. So against foreign content, we're saying cartel foreign content, say attack again, say take over. So it quite was a revolution that many people did not understand, not documented, uncoded. Uncoded. Uncoded revolution, where as young people were saying, Skatele would see Tatwe as Mabase Township, Upera Lab, Mopume Township, you are a gangster. That's why we took the form of gangster look. That's why Abanye, they actually misunderstood it as gangster music. I remember uh, somebody who's so intelligent, like Tabumbik, said, This is a, 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 a a bad culture, subculture, quite as a bad subculture that is, it, 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 it ends up, it distort a it culture, it, it distracting young people. Wow. And as a result, we had to bring in Mandela to meet with the Kwaito artist to bridge the gap as he created to Tabumbi because he did not, he did not understand the struggle that we're in. Yes. We're saying we're coming from the township, but don't judge us. Don't judge by, us. By the cover. By the book of, the, I mean, by yeah. the cover of the book. Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, white collar crime. In Zwa Banda ba faga masut. Zwa faga we na mo bo na sfagi all stand the sport. Yeah. We kabangu tuts tuts sabo tuts. No, we are not. We are not. We are. It's something that we could afford, because we couldn't afford suits. We this coming from the. This is who we are. This is who we this are. Is who we are. And that's what has actually kept Trumpies going for many years because we did not lose our identity that our friends that we grew up with yeah. would associate and identify with. So man yeka similang is fagel sport is fagel osta ng klangan na outiam if fagel osta ng osta. Abanye they alienate themselves by my se by celebrity um tole se fagel impasa zabo fifty thousand rand ji e kogenje u fifty thousand rand. Ma fika si unya tele o utende se limpinza. Oh, sure. You know, sure. so they can't associate even people that you grew up with. They just don't want you around them. But Tatela Bandwana, everybody <laughs> focuses around you. <laughs> you see, so you are stealing the limelight yeah. everywhere you go. Exactly. Wow. But yeah. Trump is. Yeah. I also tell us this. That's why Noma sends a baby, sends my interview. I remember to go to Gifunugu Saint Lindsay. We yeah. took to go to go to M. Cook in the so well done. So I was found in a bazaar when I'm a camera in it. Babu in some big screen. Babu in see in a man sitting up. Sure. Alapa. I'm cooking. So that is why Trump is still loved by Abanda Batala Bamzuma. And also your costume, guys. In fact, you kept it for all these years. And beside your costume, this there, there is an element in music that Trump is uh, brought. The, the comic parts. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Can you please tell us who came up with that idea? The word, the name Trump is in the first place. Yeah. If you remember, there was a TV drama series called Trump and the Box and Band. Oh. Which was an African okay. TV series. And this young, uh, this young boy bestowed. But esto uti ngalenze la le e kaza. E kaza, yo. Yo buntua. Yo buntua. So we then thought, okay, post-1994, we're going to call ourselves Trumpies. Trumpies. Angi Tominyoti, you cannot call us the K-word anymore. Yeah. So zbiza nga anege maj. So zbiza nga anege maj. So that many people, white people thought, hey, it's a white group. Everyone, that's why we got ama corporate gigs, because people thought, it's a white group. Trump is, oh, because it's an African group. Ah, Trump is. Trump is, yeah, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> and is then, it's true. And then, in our characters, Trump is has got characters. Um, when you look at Jaros, he's got his own character. Yeah, sure. Okay. When you look at Mandela, he's got his own character. Zain and myself. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, gondo, gondo, sure. uh, you know, <laughs> and people are associating me with academic of, of type of yeah. Of like, um, so we we kept it we kept it deliberately like that, Uti, because we were on a mission to demystify the issue. Which when you come from the township, Uthot, I remember the first time we got our royalties from Galo, we had big checks that we were given. That time, we were our checks. Uh -huh. 
and we went to FNB in town, La uh, Pago Commissioner Street. Okay. We spent almost four hours. And Having we, to explain yourselves. We, no, we didn't even know what was happening. We were waiting. I need to remember the check. They would take the check yeah. and then they must and call, behind or the, call the company to, uh -huh. verify. to verify. They ended up calling police. We were surrounded. The whole bank was surrounded by police thinking. I'm disappointed. These guys, they are, these dogs that are here, they are carrying big checks. We think that they've stolen these checks. Ha. Huh. Yeah. And these are the things that we're dealing with. Uh, uh, yeah. We're dealing with the issue which when you are seen driving a BMW 3, remember that yes, yes, also yes, yes. Um, mostly it will be Lama IS. I'm a Kusheshe. If you are seen driving a Kusheshe, you'll be stopped by police because they think you have stolen you have it, stolen you are a thug. Yeah. You're driving a Caravella, we introduced the Caravella 2.5. Yes. We industry. Hmm. No, you must have stolen it. Wow, wow. Um, so we're dealing with this without even planning to do so. That's why I'm saying it was an uncoded struggle of a township boy that is not, that, that is not planned, but naturally and instinctively we dealt with certain issues. In the biology, if I'm not wearing a suit, but yet people who are doing white collar crime today we see that is happening corruption is it's white collar crime corruption is yeah. white collar crime yeah you know yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, you know uh, jump uh, 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 break into somebody's house not because of the finish or something you yeah. know yeah. Then, uh, yeah. yeah how do you feel that uh, i mean um the bansula culture yeah. It's still there. And now I, I just want to highlight something. Mm. When you go to intersections or robots, as we call them, or traffic lights, yeah. you find those guys, Abba Peta, Abba 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 Kreitz, you yeah. know, and the we are big. They are playing trumpets. There's no music, but they are doing trumpets. Yeah. Um, this is what I also debated with um, Matore Motsecha and Professor Copeland on one of the TV programs, and I said, Kwaito is a culture. Because culture is defined by how people dress up. Okay. There's a language that There's comes language. with it. There's type of music that comes with it. There's type of dances that comes with it. Jeff is Bansul. Okay. And that is the reason why it has gone beyond its time, because it is a culture. Other genres, they come in as just a genre. That's why they die quickly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Kaito was a culture, and it is taken from Amakwaitos. Okay. There was a gangster called Amakwaitos, Fibay Dominator, Kululagbo, Shabvi, Labo, Spooking. Mm-hmm. Befa Laba Kipe, one side. Yeah. That's why you see Alaska is taking that from oh, oh. Amakwaitos. Yeah. Before uh, they would wear those um, sneakers as a black sassy bees are my foot sake. Sorry to say that. No, 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 no. I'm a foot sake. See, I was this one for Gillen. That's my foot sake. I'm a foot sake. I'm a foot sake. I'm a foot sake. I'm a foot sake. That's why Ubona, most of the guys, when they come to this, even when you go to the street, it's either Oster or I'm a foot sake. Because it's a culture that comes from the 50s, the 60s. It keeps on evolving. It's a really move. I get to imagine baby T feeling quite. Yeah. It's back now. It's back now. By demand. I'm so surprised that I mean Trumpies is also getting gigs these days. We are fully booked until January. Wow. There's no week. Sometimes we do three shows in a day. Wow. We just did um, Tembisa this past weekend, and then immediately after Tembisa, we drove to Botswana to go and perform the same night. Wow. So that's how big it is now. Wow. But okay, yeah. it, 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 when I see those young people, I wish I was the Minister of Arts and Culture in this country. Yeah. Because when I see them, I see this cultural tourism that could be linked to what they are doing. If you were to take all these young people and rotate them into spaces that are created for such, to entertain, 
the visitors, the, true, the travelers, true, true, you know, true. the tourists. Yes. Those guys would be having a living. Bala Pestratini doing it, um, expecting somebody to to feel pity for feel pity for them and give them something. But if you if the Department of Arts and Culture could structure it in such a way that they get paid for being in the spaces, they would earn a living those young people. They would earn a living and it would enhance, enhance. their lives, you know. And uh, I know that you are a lawyer by profession. Mm -hmm. How did you get into law? <laughs> I'm not a lawyer. Who are you? Because I'm I not a lawyer. Said that I mean you are a lawyer. No. And and also I remember that you were once um, hired by the office like a president, a president. Jacob Zuma. Then can yes. you please take us back there? Uh, I'm not a lawyer. Where is this uh, 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 theory of which you are a lawyer coming People from? People think so because of my artic articulation. You know, oh, they sure. think because I went to school. I didn't. I I even said this when I was going back to school. I said I'm not going back to school to get something to fall back onto or to get something uh, to go and look for a job. I was enhancing my knowledge because music has more intellectual property issues. Okay. And that's where the money is. But we don't understand the fine line. We oh, always yeah. go to the dotted line yes, and, sign and sign without going through the and fine line. And hang yourself for life. Yes. So in order to deal with those things, I wouldn't be able to be, um, to be engaging people on the issues that we are dealing with now had I not gone to school and did that, you know. Um, so I didn't even do my articles. I did not even qualify because I was excluded. You did go to law school. Yes, I went to law school, but I was excluded. Um, and, and I'm still going to tell the story. It's a, it's a painful story that I had to deal with for many years. If you remember, there was a story where they wrote about the Guaito killer still haunted by the past where I had shot somebody in um, 707 in self-defense. Now, when, when that happened, seven years later, somebody, the friend, who was a friend to the guy that I shot, was now with City Press and decided to revive the story, resuscitate the story, and said I was treated, given preferential treatment by the Minister of Justice because I was a member of NC and I was a celebrity. Oh. And that time, it was going to be my word against nobody because the guy was not there. There was no witness to the situation. He was trying to break into my car. And when I came out of the show at 707, when I came out and I said, look, what are you doing? I thought he would, because he, he would have been there as a fan in the first place. For him to be there, yeah. it means that he loved Trumpies. Sure. You know, so many of them are in the middle of the day, and they are in the middle of the day. Instead of saying, I, I, you know, I, I retreat. No, no he, he just went so wild. And only to realize after that he had five cases of uh, immortal stolen cars. He mm. was out on the bed mm. and he was drunk. So mm. when I approached him, he, he then became wild thinking that, hey, mind you, I'm and I'm going to go back. And if I go back now, even the my bills now are a little in a my case I five six or bad, you know. Okay. So I ended up shooting him a swim, and when I shot him, uh, seven years later, Maduna comes says, "No, no one, no one is above the law." Okay. So, so that with the pending crime criminal record, uh -huh. I couldn't qualify to be. Oh known. my God. Yes. And that story, oh, that yes. story, that's one story that broke me into pieces. Nothing has laminated stories, I can ask bigger, and the web, and I said, I am so that each and every day when I wake up, I look at that, um, at that story, yeah, and say, There's no other story that will ever break me wow. from this one. And that's wow. what motivated me all these years to yes. fight, even regardless, sometimes in Nilwa, Nisaling, you one. I didn't know about this thing. I chained myself against Sambro in one particular over 15,000 members, but say Sambro were not getting their royalties. You know? wow. Yeah, so that is the situation. But people thought, because what, what was then popularized around my going back to school was that I went back to school in order to win the elections, SRC. I remember there was an article that said so. 
Um, and and because Minang Tati Advantage, which are more popular than other candidates, so I was there for that. And uh, people always thought, okay, he went to school. He went to school. What was he doing? A law. So he's a lawyer. Yeah, and yet, lawyer, but even yeah. the articulation, I mean, yes, I didn't go to school to, to, to pass. Yeah. I went to school to get knowledge. To get knowledge and, and use yeah, it properly. Yes. <laughs> and then uh, in the office of President Jacob Zuma, because the reason why you went there, you were advocating for uh, the music industry, I think. And how was it? Can you please uh, put us in the picture there? Okay. Yeah. Eh? So this <laughs> podcast is going to really give people something that they've never gotten from other interviews, about five minutes, five Five, five seconds. Wow, we love that. <laughs> um, yeah. Yes, Eugene. He's very close to Jacob Zuma because he was sympathizing with Jacob Zuma, especially when he was removed from the office of deputy, deputy president. Deputy president. And the reason why I associate and identify it with him, mm -hmm. as a township boy, you are always told you can, you, you will not amount to anything sure. based on the environment, the surroundings. Yeah, true. Jacob Zuma did not know English, learned English from the newspapers. But Jacob Zuma was the head of intelligence, the MK, the uh, Sure. And he became the deputy president of this country. And nobody had a problem with that. Okay? But after these issues, Zitala, Jacob Zuma, Epuma, Ekoswa, I saw a Joseph who was also yeah. biblically, I'm there. Oh, yeah. In that space. Ah, no. <laughs> Touch me anyway, God. <laughs> so, biblically, I see Joseph who was thrown away by his own brothers into M. Kotinlo. Yeah. And then later on, he's now the governor. In oh, another oh yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I'm going to support this man. He's a Joseph. I'm going to work with him until Bambu said. Zumbu said, and we were going to Polukwan uh, at the time, 2007. I came up with the slogan 100% Jay Z. I oh. did posters, I did everything, ha. the creativity. Of I did an album with him. That was a I mean, that was a campaign on its own. Yeah. Because I, I think it started with 100% Jay Z and 100% Zulu Boy. Yes, yes. You yes. are the man behind that. Exactly. And then I did an album with him. I brought him into the studio to sing. Mshinwa, mshinwa. Mshinwa, mshinwa. Yeah, but cool mshinwa came back from Puluku and is Mashombe. He's now the president of NC. Now my career died. My musical career. Yeah. Everybody sabotaged me. The media, remember that the media was against Tuzu. Oh, yes. So they killed, they killed me. Each and time so they, you paid a price. Uh, yeah, I paid that price. Each time they... They um, wanted to say something about Jacob Zuma on SAPC. They would show me coming, walking into Iket Laga Jacob Zuma when, when the Scorpions, they visited all the houses, like it was a raider. I was the first one to come into the house, Lila. Uh, every long I say, I mean, I say, uh, how thin or what? Okay. Yeah. I was the first one, and they would show that footage every time they reported about me, even if it wasn't about into a scope. Even if it was not yeah. relevant. Yeah. But so, they just had to push it because there was a propaganda behind it. Yes, they were putting me, putting Fana Nozuma, rapist, corrupt, and all this. So yeah. people would link me with that every time with that picture. Now, after, fast forward, after Polokwane back, now, Jacob Zuma is back now as president. Now he's ascending to uh, the office of the president as the president of the country, which is what I wanted. Yes. From deputy president, yeah. I said, Uzo Biele, I will president. And now we I wrote to him and I said, my journey ends here. I wasn't doing it because I was expecting you to do something. I even bought Uzo Mama suit. Wow. I've got a picture where we were wearing, it was looking very shabbily. Wow. We were wearing a sport in an as a statue piece of our own vision. So, my echoed, I would then bring him a masu to would at least a barrel presentable. Yes, yes. Um, so then post that it was 2020, 20, 
20, uh, World Cup 2010. Yeah. Magos are welcome. I was the first one to raise my uh, bone of contention with the um, 2010 World Cup. Uguti. Yes, other sectors are going to benefit, but this sector of arts and culture will not because the main sponsor, the big sponsor, say World Cup. The baggage that it came with, regardless of the fact that it's a political, uh, you know, reward mm -hmm. for the country. It had Sony as a sponsor for it, meaning that music and anything that has to do with music, electronic the performances, it was going to be going to be run by Sony. So I was the first one to raise that against the Sony, that big company. Mm. I was the first one to raise it. Kuma meetings, labe kona kona bo. I've been causing. I would stand up and say, I have a problem. One of the things that uh, the government had to sign, DT, I had to sign an agreement. Oguti, if the World Cup shows any sign, Oguti, it's not going to benefit the locals. Then they have a right to would buy it by far. But they never used that. We had cultural diversity, which was signed. Uh, South Africa is a signatory to that uh, with the United Nations. We signed the preferential treatment of developing countries, but we were not able to use that tool against them. So I was raising those things, and he saw me at a union, uh, established union, I'm an artist. I was there to raise this thing, and he now I lapo ezwenza i. As a as a main speaker, okay, yeah, um, so he saw me raising this, and he said, "What you are raising, Eugene, it's it's real issues, you know." And I wish other artists could stand up and raise these things. And then the second incident that where he saw me being bold is when I confronted U U Lena. Who was this lady? You remember the lady were in seven the plaza and in Lwanda Bez Lambi, come back. Togo or something? To yes. Togo. Yes. Okay. I confronted Togo Titisa <laughs> as an artist. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Give figure like things are going to paraphernalia in the NC, I'm a t-shirt, no, no, no. In fact, to list that scene number. Not, I, guys, you're not yourselves. You're not yourselves. What, what's happening? And then he told me, Guti, and say, I mean, uh, they haven't been paid for over seven months. And now they can't even raise this issue because now it would be like they're fighting NC. So they don't know what to do. My huh. phone huh. president. This can't be the situation. Not yeah. NC that not says, and then your own workers. No. Have not been paid. Huh. It's not the new thing. Mm. So I was addressing it with the president. The president, what? No, Tata in Nambaga talk about this because we are not dealing with salaries. Um, and then um, chelo go to book because I didn't know that that's the situation. Mm. And then I called to what it is. Huh. I'm confront. On the same day, they got paid. Ha! Huh. Yes. And then the third <laughs> incident. When he then did State of the Nation address, I need to work in 2009. Uh -huh. When he did the State of the Nation address and, and, and he omitted mentioning arts and culture as a unifying component of the society and he said sports, I wrote him a scathing letter to say I'm disappointed. I even gave him some little education to say instead in our context as a country, South Africa, um, arts and culture should be the umbrella where sports comes under arts and culture. And the reason being, when you think of sports in South Africa, it's a culture. It's a culture. When you think of soccer, you think of black people. When you think of Irapi, Amapunu. When you think of cricket, Amandi and Amangis. Okay. Umtwana Wogatak. My tata e tennis ball. Aga tati racket. Tennis racket. We are take. Yeah. Yeah. Om lung tadir tennis racket. Yeah. So that's that's a culture, you know. That's what defines us. Utina. We don't. So if you are giving the prominence to sports, no wonder sports is getting so much big budgets direct from a uh, treasury. We go cap in hand always to go and beg. Even this department is underfunded. The department has income because you don't understand the 
a concept, a, 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 a concept the arts and culture in the country. You don't have the understanding of it. And then, if you remember, then he responded, you can still go Google, and when he responded after three days, remember that after State of the Nation address, then he gets some critics on yes, his feet, yes, yes, and then yes. he would respond. The yeah. day. And then he mentioned me, you know, Zuma with his humility. He mentions me that I wrote, <laughs> <laughs> then he mentions me. Guma responds, I know he wants to apologize to Uyushin Mutetwa. Um, please be, be um, assured that we will really, really look into the issues, the arts and culture. You are correct. When, when you told me the context of South African arts and culture, I understood very clear. Wow. You know, and because of that, he realized that if I can confront the president, I can confront Tandimudis. Yeah. Yes, it's Tandimudis, oh, not talk. Not talk what it is. Uh, Tandimudis. Yes, okay, Tandimudis. Sure. Yeah. And I can resolve yeah, the tandem. issue. Yeah, but to base, base, to base, ANC, about things, stuff. This is the person I need for the hotline. That's why he did not deploy wow. me under arts and culture, but I had it, wow. the hotline of president, because yeah. he wanted. He actually removed somebody with three degrees doctorate who was going to take that position. Over oh, second, fuck you. I gave try. it to you. Yes, I gave it to me. I said, yeah. this is the type of a person I want in that office because that office, it is like a phone, a, a like office in a president. When you call, people would expect with the ISO Penula president. I want him in that space because this is the person who cares about others yeah, who sure. actually moves yeah. to, to resolve our issues yeah. you who can, can confront anybody for others yes. and, and also you are fearless i'm fearless and and then um the highlights of that hotline because i remember uh, when it was launched uh, um Sholos was the first person i think to take some few calls am i correct yes yes yeah. when it was yes when it was launched yeah. the first call, call came through to he was in, a, in the office to pick it up. And then um, the success of that and also the experience and observation you made. Um, okay, let's, let's, let's close this one. People thought that um, because of my support, political support, yeah. going to Pulukwan, yeah. now it was payback time. He was rewarding you. Rewarding me. Yeah. Little did they know that I qualified without even a CV for that. Wow. Okay? Wow. Uh, because of the CV, the practical CV yes, that he yes, had experienced. Yes. And then with the success of that, we got so many calls that I think it clogged a, a, a system. I'm a calls as our taller lab we are around 80 something thousand. Ah. And the reason being, it, it was not properly communicated with the hotline would be dealing with the issues where there's government Involved, safe is government lines. services. Yeah. Yeah. So, Utenje na abantu bafun. You won't believe that I was getting calls even if so, like, Unkoska zong phone lati, nine dot ya my phone ugung ep. Hi, man. There are police, there are cops there. Yeah. You can hear Kelly was Alexander. Hi, Bo. Yeah. Kelly was Alexander. Where are phone any office lam show? One a.m. One oh a.m. Oh my God! Because we had to give our cell phones. This is government property. You will give it to people. Yeah. Bazo for nela man. Bazo for nela And and his his briefing was that I want to create a government that is caring, that is interactive, that is responsive. Um. Yeah. The three principles: yes. caring. Ubuntu, yes. Um, interactive. interactive. Yeah. It engages people. Yeah. It is yeah. responsive. responsive. Now I applied the three principles to the T. Wow. I would get a call like that one and wake up in the middle of the night and drive to Alexander to go and resolve in Dubai. Your Ian daughter at Kavana no Pass. Wow. Because oh, oh President what don't. Okay. You know, don't wow. Wow. deny them access to Sir, you guys. Can I and, please say this? Yeah. Don't you think this is what keeps Um Sholozi in the hearts of Amma yeah. South Africans? People don't don't know that man. 
it's a sad situation that they've painted that man. So Babu Zetina, who were very close. I went to Nabo Double HP. I went to Msholo's house as I said, deputy president. We did not get searched. Must be a deputy president of the country. Ha. That man came uh, that day. Why is Ojelua? Khalimam Mamshlante was there to brief him, to tell him that he was going to be uh, dismissed the following day. Imagine something like that. And we came on the, the eve of that announcement. He was upstairs with Khalima. He personally came downstairs to see us, to meet us and say, guys, I'm still with the SG of UNC. I'm going to come back after 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Came personally. He could have sent Isabins, we didn't know, tell them good thing, yes. You know, he physically, personally came down to tell us that. And then he went back up. He was told he's going to be dismissed. He came back, sat with us, giggling, talking, telling us, I get this issue here, Jess. I got it from him. That very same day, you would where Jess comes from. Ah. Without, you know, I would have feel it. I mean, I wouldn't be able to talk to anybody knowing what to say. Yeah, sure. You know, sure. I was going to be very traumatized Not and just very. Yeah. Yeah. We are talking about the scope of the Exactly. Exactly. The whole world yeah. will the be whole watching. World, yeah. But he wow. comes, he sits with us, he talks with us. He, he, they were looking after us. But then he said, What are that? We are talking about the introduction to Khalima. Not us introducing ourselves to him and Khalima. He introduces us to Khalima. So it's, these are. Uh, uh, very, very important people from the sector. Uh, they come from the music industry. In plain but, uh, words, <laughs> sir, to the people of South Africa and the world, if you look at your camera, what would you say to them about the misconceptions or how uh, Mshalos was painted? Is there any word you would like to say to the people? I, there I, is yours. I wish I could have that... I don't know, 10 hours to talk about Mishos and tell, about Mishos and tell the people what type of a person he is. That I've never come across such a humble person in my life. What made me to get closer to him was that humility, but also um, the fact that m there are many young people who would have drawn an encouragement, inspiration from him having not gone to school, but be able to go to the highest office. I saw him as that light to many young people that don't think that because of the environment and the surrounding, we often get told by our parents that you will amount to nothing. But here was Msholozi who became the president of the country without formal education. And nobody had a problem with him when he was responding to questions as a deputy president, but only when he becomes a president and everybody talks about his education. He was dismissifying this issue with, to us, intelligence, Uklaganipa is the Western culture. I was also fighting, I'm still fighting that, that don't think that when you did not go to school and qualify, you cannot, I can debate with professors and lawyers and what I don't I don't fear anybody and I didn't qualify to be a lawyer but I can stand with an advocate and deal with the issues because of Msholos. I took that from Msholos. I was inspired and encouraged by so yeah if I were I, I would say a lot. You know this is one person who opens up his house as a president of the country to speak to strangers. I I came I I once visited him at his house and he was you know he had a in the EQ, Yabantu, as if they were, he was like, you know, a doctor when people are coming to consult. And he was seeing everyone one by one, giving you the, enough time to talk to him. And he will usher you to the door personally and not say, no, Spanman knows, and Nimland and Nimbegela Papan. This is the type of a person that we had. Unfortunately, the world rubbished him because he was taking the economy from white people, white hands into the black. You, you know that um, some people have this <coughs> belief that these days there is not a court of law in South Africa that will rule in favor of Umsholos. It has been proven. It has been. I proven. mean, uh, how do you, how do you, um, how do you keep on saying there's prima facie? 
for over 20 years, you still be saying, no, this person, there's, there's, a, there's a possibility, there's a possibility. Well, what type of law is that? What type of, you know... Uh, justice. Justice is that. Yeah. That's, look, they haven't proven nothing. And I can tell you, they're not going to prove anything. They're not going to find anything. There's no way Mshulose, they'll find Mshulose having transacted money from his account to, or received money into his account. No, they will never. his mattress. No, 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 even not mattress. It's even worse <laughs> when you have my money from under mattress uh, and dollars, and you are saying that it's for animals. So it's only Americans who are buying your animals. Europeans are not there. There are no euros. There are no pounds. It's only dollars. As as Hey, you know what? I'm speechless. And this uh, conversation has taken another turn. Another turn. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad it did. <laughs> and it did on this show, you know. <laughs> I said to you, yeah. people are going to hear things that they've never heard because we're often given five minutes to explain something that we did over 20 years. Wow. I, I don't normally like doing interviews on radio because people and radio, they will be asking you the same question that we were asked 25 years ago. Ha! In five minutes, you must explain a concept that took over 20-something odd years. And also the question, where do you see yourself in five years? How many times have you had that question? Imagine, how many five years have I passed? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Yo, you yeah. know what? Uh, yeah. I'm so grateful, Mr. Mtetwa, and thank you for this amazing, amazing interview. We are here at the Benster Show, and how I wish one day God can have favor. And, oh, Mr. Jacob Zuma, don't you think it will be beautiful? Yeah, no, eh? you should, you should. It will be beautiful, you know. We are looking forward to that opportunity as the Benster show. And I must say, there's a trend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, there's, there's, there's some hot coffee going on there. Yeah, and God, yeah. Lama must go and have coffee with him because I haven't spoken to him for such a long time. Wow. Uh, and that's why I feel that I owe him. Yeah. Because I'm one person who, who would tell a, a good story. Yeah. You know, I often say that when you've done 10 good things. Yes. And then you do one thing wrong, you are still nine times good to me. I don't I love that. I don't, I don't. I love that. Erase people. You are still nine times, nine good, times good for me. the nine good things you have done. And people take the one error and make it nine times bad. Yeah. Even 11 times bad. In, I mean, even a Obe thousand times Obe bad. My na, since they do yeah. good, good way. But at least, but there's at least. no scrapyard that I know. Sabantu. Sabantu. There's no... Um, beyond, beyond Be repair. Right off. Yeah, right off. Yeah. Beyond redemption. Yeah. You just write uh, it off. Even Jesus Christ wouldn't have came yeah, if sure. people were written off. True. You know. But we have this tendency of writing people off. There's no one who is sinless. Even the Bible says that if you say you are sinless, you're telling lies. You yeah, like but Pharisees. Yeah, but Yes. In media, in nanya, in influence. Me nanging it's manguza van to get me. Okay, you're telling me that you don't like so and so. Why? Who told you that? Then I always say, it's the media. The media. Then that means you are brainwashed. A media has the power to brainwash people. And in closing, I would love to say this as we are the Benster show, we are looking forward to more interviews. And the best interview we can ever have as this podcast is to share a table with Ubaba Umshulose. And, and I must say, Mr. Mtetwa and Itrompis, big up to Itrompis. Look for U Music with Trompis online, download, support them. And now they are 
back again full force and we are glad to have the trumpets in the studio <laughs> represented and... by Obaba Oyojin Tetwa. Yeah, thank you very much for the platform. And next year we'll be turning 30 as Trumpies, 30 years. And how are you going it. to celebrate that? So we are going to do a national tour. Wow. Um, a, a, a national tour where, remember that when we, we were starting to, now we didn't have uh, the smartphones. So yes. we never captured the moments. Yeah. So we are going to try and reenact or relive those moments. Those moments. Yeah, with now cameras and that. Yes. And we haven't released a, no one knows a DVD, a, a Best of Trumpies. Yeah. We are going to yeah. do a live DVD, live DVD of the, um, best, of of the best of Trumpies. Wow. But traveling around, also getting the footage from people who would back home learning a Trumpies, telling the story, say Trumpies, in, in the same live DVD performance, I mean, performance live DVD. Well, shine to Trumpies, and thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe. Check our YouTube page, The Ben's The Show, and our Twitter. I mean, you can find us on Twitter, you can find us on Instagram, and also check our website. We love you.